Good morning, everyone. I tell, I'm told that the camera is on and that we're online and worshipers are joining us all over the world. <laughs> hey, it's possible with the internet. You never know, do you? So we're going to assume there are people here with us that we don't see or hear. And that's nice to know that our worship is reaching out. Uh, most of our announcements we're going to do at the middle section today. But I want to say, one, is that we're making a verbal change on the prayers of the people. So make sure you've got your black prayer book with you. You know, we, we're using it every week now. So make sure you have access to one of the black prayer books. Allison, you hit that light switch and it made it go off. So uh, there you Thank you so much. <laughs> so be sure you have access to uh, the black prayer book. And we have one other official announcement. Chris? Yes. Uh, next Sunday Stand is... Stand back here where the camera can see you, please. <laughs> next Sunday is an important Sunday for all of us who've been involved in Christian formation all year. And whether or not you realize that the 6th um, through 12th graders have been meeting me outside hot, cold, rain, wind, whatever... <clears throat> And the um, first through fifth graders um, have been working on their YouTube lessons, all 25 that I recorded for them this year. And next Sunday is our chance to thank them for their participation and present them with their certificates, along with the adults like uh, Helen and Rhonda and Isabel and Frank and those and Charlie, who come and make the class possible for um, safeguarding God's children assistance, and most importantly, the two high school seniors who will be receiving um, their checks from the collection that has been made, and hint, hint, we did very well this year, and there are only two of them, and cutting the money in half, lucky, uh, Faith's <laughs> daughter and uh, Christine's son, and they'll be receiving that, so please plan on being here at the 10 o'clock so we can do all of that end of the year. So this is not really a graduation, is it? Because you never graduate yeah. from Christian education. Yeah. You just move up to a next level. <laughs> I've known some churches that they, they don't have adult education because they said, well, we all got confirmed and now we're finished. Yeah. Huh. You're never finished. There's always more to learn. Let's take a moment of silence, though, as we gather ourselves to worship, both present and far away.
for us today begins on page 355. This is where you need the black books, page 355. Because it's because it's still Easter, we're using the second of these introductory dialogues. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, whom truly to know is everlasting life. Grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please be seated. accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord. For nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, 
you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I? that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silent, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given, even to the Gentiles, the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 148 together in unison. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the hearts. Praise him all the angels of his Praise him all the hosts. Praise him the sun and moon. Praise him all the shining stars. Praise him heaven of heavens and the waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created. He made them stand the house forever and ever. He gave them the law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. You see monsters all the deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fall, tempestuous men do we do the will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together, let them raise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants. For the children of Israel, a people born near him, Hallelujah. Our second lesson today is from Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every, every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. At the Last Supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to see the King. You know, I said at the very beginning, I said, this is still Easter, and I mean the obvious signs, the beautiful white vestments of Easter with the gold trim, the wonderful and dignified Paschal candle still lighting the way, just as it did on that night when Christ rolled away the stone from what became the empty tomb. We still have all the alleluias we're singing. It's been five weeks already, and perhaps in our mentality, we all keep thinking, well, that's something of the past. But no. In the liturgical year, Easter must last longer than Lent. Amen. Now, what does that mean theologically? It means that joy lasts longer than <laughs> deprivation than the suffering. I mean, Good Friday is terrible, and we build up and prepare for it over 40 days, but Easter is greater, and life is greater than death, and resurrection is greater than suffering, and Easter lasts 50 days longer than Lent. A little Sunday school class here, but I, it's good psychology, and it's important for us to remember the joy is more than the suffering. They do go hand in hand, and it is interesting to note that the same gospel lesson I just read to you now was the very same gospel lesson we read on Monday Thursday. As he's at the table, the Last Supper, surrounded by everybody, Judas has just gone off to have him arrested. He's telling them, do as he has done, love one another as he has loved us. That uh, sort of worrisome challenge because we know that his greatest love is going to be revealed when he's nailed to the cross. Is that the way he wants us to love one another? Well, I mean, it may be that it's to that degree that we're willing not only to live for those we love, but even willing to die for those we've loved. That would be a very Christ-like way to look at it. But I don't think Jesus is trying to say uh, that uh, the Good Friday is the end of his ministry or his purpose. It's a lot more about Easter. Good Friday was the way to get to it. 
because without his death and his atonement, there would not be the chance for redemption and resurrection. So they are irrevocably linked, and you can't have Easter without Good Friday. But Good Friday is not the point. Easter is the point. And lest we try to minimize it to thinking it means the point of Easter is Jesus lives again, that's not the point either. Sin is defeated, is closer to the point. The old world has passed away, is closer to the point. Hope springs eternal, is closer to the point. Life triumphs over death, is closer to the point. God and his creation are reunited, is almost as close as you can get to the point. Because the sin which separated us from God was the reason Christ suffered and rose and defeated it so that there is no longer this obstacle that comes between us and God. Sometimes it's pictured in classic art as over here is the creation and there's maybe a a huge group of men and women standing over here. And over here is heaven. And there's a great throne room and a lot of angels and God reigning supreme. And in between the two is this giant, endlessly deep chasm. And no one can get across. I mean, this would have been a classic Old Testament way of looking at it. This chasm is what the product of sin has done, is split creation right down so that God is separated from his loving people, his beloved, not always loving, but always beloved people. And that chasm of sin somehow must be crossed. Are we to dwell in that eternal paradise with God? And so in this classical imagery, there was developed a term that was used actually uh, by the Roman emperors in the false pagan religion of the Romans, where they talked about the emperor could make a great sacrifice and build a bridge between uh, the mere people of earth and the gods of heaven. And, and they used this phrase, you might have heard about it before, it's Pontifex Maximus. The Pontifex Maximus. This is where we get the word the pontiff for the Pope. Pontiff, well, if you've been to the Pont du Gard, or the, in, in any of the many ponts going across the River Seine in Paris, you might read this last, well, that's the word for bridge. A pont, P-O-N-T, is a bridge. In Latin, a pontifex. Fex is like where we get the word factory or manufacture, the fac of facture is the fex of pontifex and the so bridge builder. The pontifex means he builds bridges and the maximus is the biggest one. He's the biggest bridge builder and of course when uh, been applied to the Caesars, of course it was not a great thing, but Christians were very good later when they were growing and conquering the Roman Empire, they started appropriating a lot of terms, and they appropriated this term, and they said the Pontifex Maximus is not the Caesar, come on. They're just humans, not even very good ones. The real Pontifex Maximus is Jesus, who builds a great and sturdy bridge so that we can all cross over that gaping chasm, the product of sin. Now, I like this, partly because I'm kind of an engineer and architect in my mind, and I like to imagine, you know, this great structure which allows us to cross over. There's another image, though, that says Jesus didn't need to build a bridge because Jesus is the salv salvation of the world, the Savior. And if we're going to talk about what words mean, why don't we take the S-A-V of Savior and salvation and talk, where does this S-A-V salve come from? Well, it, didn't you ever get a, a bobo on your knee and your mother put some salve on that knee? It's an ointment, an unguent, a medicine. I need some right here on my, the bobo I have on my finger. I need a salve. Well, when you put a salve on, it's for healing. And the salvator of the world is the healer, 
The Savior heals us. It's a, it's a, a medical word. Salvation means to give health and healing. So instead of having to build a bridge across a chasm, your wound is healed. That is another wonderful image of what Easter really is all about. It's not about Jesus coming back to life in a particular body, but it's about the great wound which is caused by sin being healed up, or the great chasm caused by sin being bridged over. There are other words that we use when we talk about how do we get to heaven, and almost all of them have some kind of a root message that says this is what Easter's about. Easter's about all creation being put right in relationship to the Creator, who in spite of all the sin we created never ceased to love us and to accept us and to be willing to forgive us. And I really, I, I, if we could boil down, we might say that Easter is about this, about a new, healed, happy, healthy salvation of all creation. This is what happens when that stone is rolled away and Jesus breaks forth. A small, seemingly humble, personal event in the life of a particular person becomes something that changes everything of creation. And all of us find our hope in that. Without it, we're still on the other side of the chasm. We still have the festering wound of sin. We're still hopeless and despairing. And if we are in any kind of reality, we are desperate for someone who can come and save us, heal us, build us a bridge. Last week, when we were talking about mothers and the Mother's Day sermon, I, I know I got a little bit philosophical when I was talking about unification and how we are united always in our soul with the one who created us and so forth. It's natural for us to have this longing and desire to be at one with our parents and, and how that is symbolic of our being made in the image of God and wanting to be in union with the Creator. You know, all of that is, you know, good. It, it really is another way of repeating the same message. And I, I, I guess that I might as well reveal to you every Sunday at Easter, I'm trying to reveal the same message in different ways. Isn't it great that Jesus lives? But it's not great enough that just Jesus lives. Isn't it great that we can live through Jesus? Isn't that great? Well, it's not just us. It's all people. Isn't it great that everybody can live in Jesus? Isn't it great that the whole world is saved on Easter? Isn't it great that everything we've ever longed for, ever needed, ever hoped for, is now possible? And all those things we ever feared, ever worried about, ever had anxiety about, suddenly they have, they have no claim over us anymore. Because Jesus lives. Hallelujah. And because Jesus lives, we're all going to see the king. I don't know how we're going to get there, whether it's over a bridge or through some kind of a good healing, or maybe we're ascending into heaven in the great upgoing. You know, there's all kinds of ways we can picture this. But when we say we are Easter people, this is really a huge statement, a huge creed of all these things that we believe. And it's not important enough just for us to say, oh, I'm so glad I'm saved. And that reduces Jesus' ministry down to a very small thing, when in reality, Jesus' ministry is universal galactic all of creation so if we take now maybe this newly explained and amplified idea of what Easter means now let's put it back to that Monday Thursday gospel lesson where Jesus is there with all the disciples except Judas who's run off to turn him in and betray him he's washed their feet 
He's fed them with something. He says, this is my flesh and blood. This is my body given for you. And he says, in this I am glorified that you love one another as I have loved you. Take a minute just to think about what, how did he love us? And it can be small and personal and direct, or it can be something, you know, really mind-blowing. Is it an honor? Is it a privilege? Or is it a great responsibility that he tells us to do just the same thing? He tells us as individuals, he also tells us as an institution, as a parish, go now and do as I have done, love as I have loved, heal as I have healed, build bridges as I have built bridges, accept one another, forgive one another, love one another, make there no distinction between peoples. Let there be nothing that would separate you from the others. I, I, I always cringe, and it's not because of your reading, but I cringe at that first lesson when, you know, even these early Christians come to Peter and they chastise him. How dare you go and give this message to the Gentiles? You know, they're our enemy. You know, they had always been taught that to be the people of God, the chosen people. They were chosen, and everybody else was unchosen. The word Gentiles means all those other people. How dare you take that good news for us with our Jewish Messiah and you go share it with those bleepity bleep Gentiles. <laughs> you know, I think they've missed the point, but, but we're forgiving them because they were very early on and the Holy Spirit was still revealing things, even as the Holy Spirit continues to help us understand this huge responsibility to love as Jesus loved, to serve the world as Jesus served the world. It's a huge responsibility. And parishes have to take it seriously. If you're on the vestry, it's something that should be asked at every vestry meeting. Is this action we are taking this week glorifying God? Is this motion that we are voting on now, does it help us love one another better? Is the class I teach revealing Easter? Is the song I sing praising the God who sits in heaven? Is every decision we make an Easter decision? If so, then, then hallelujah. If not, then rethink, reboot, start over, reconsider. Any tradition that outcasts certain people, that is, oh, I don't think that's what he wants. Any tradition which binds people or limits people or stops people, hinders people, that seems to be contradictory. Because Easter, Easter is too important. We just can't tie it down. We can't hide it under a box. We can't lock it away just for ourselves. It's just too big, too important. You're looking for a new rector. I think I'm going to say this. I'm not going to look at Allison because she knows I'm talking to her. <laughs> May the leadership of this parish understand that what you want as much as anything is what you need is someone who can help come and join you in proclaiming Easter in all its glory. Amen. Amen. Turn in your black prayer book to page 300 and something. 358 for the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became
ordinance of scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. For the prayers of the people today, we're going to make a page change. And this is where I warned you we need you to have your black prayer books open. Instead of prayer one, we are going to be led to pray form number three on 387. All the private and personal parish intercessions will come at the end after the dialogue. Page 387. <clears throat> Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our, our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, that thy perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Mel Melvia, Rick, Deborah, Barbara, Benno, Barbara, Alicia, Al, Carrie, Kenyon, Donna, Marilyn, Tamara, Ruby, Ron, Gloria, Nessie, Princess, Pamela, and for those for whom the DOK pray. We continue to pray for peace in Ukraine and in all places of warfare and conflict. We continue to pray for the Vestry and the Search Committee of St. Mark's. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Share with one another a sign of God's peace. Please be seated, if you would. We are shifting most of our announcements from having done the early plays because, there, frankly, there are some people who come in and miss them. So we're going to do some announcements at this point. And uh, 
I don't know what her little fingers are. I think she's counting people, but Allison has some announcements that she wants to make for us. Yes, come and stand where the camera can see you. Yes. First of all, I want to say welcome to everybody um, on this beautiful Sunday morning. If you're a visitor with us today, um, uh, we thank you for being here. And there's cards on the backs of the pews that you can fill out and um, give us a little bit of information about yourself. We're not going to harass you. We just want to thank you for coming. And um, also, we I think we have some welcome bags for our newcomers, and so we'd like to give you a little gift before you leave. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank Father Ken Demick for celebrating with us today here, here. Um, and, <laughs> and sharing the good news about Easter, and um, I hope I, I, will, I, I pray for the uh, insight and discernment of Simon Peter <laughs> during this process, and hopefully God will give me some visions, maybe like he did, he did Simon Peter and Acts today. We can only hope. <laughs> but um, we, we will, we are going to get through this. Um, um, a few things to be aware of. Friday, there will be, Friday, there will be a wine and cheese social for the women um, of St. Mark. So if you are a woman, and you are welcome to come and join us Friday at 6 o'clock. Um, we'll be out on the patio out here. We're just going to bring some wine. People are going to bring wine and cheese. Bring your favorite wine and cheese. And um, we'll just have a good time. There's no agenda. It's just to visit and socialize. So um, uh, we, we welcome you to come do that. Um, we will have our uh, celebration of Pentecost on June 5th. Um, and so this is traditionally when we take our family photo. And so everybody wears red for Pentecost. So if you would wear red that day. Um, we also have St. Mark's t-shirts like, <laughs> um, like, the, like this. And if you would like to have one of these t-shirts for your photo, if you don't have something you know, red that you would like to wear in the picture or you just want a St. Mark's t-shirt, um, you can contact the church office. And we have some of those. And if we don't have one in your size, we can certainly order some more. Um, and then the other thing that we will do on that day is after we take our family photo outside, we will have a nice church potluck, and we hope that y'all all stay for that uh, potluck. Um, the other thing I'd like to announce is that um, on July 3rd, we will have morning prayer again, um, but we'll have um, uh, patriotic music. Tom is going to do some patriotic music uh, for us on that day, which is traditional, but, but we'll have patriotic music, and um, we'll have hot dogs and... Um, stuff like that, good old American uh, fare for people to stay and eat afterwards, and so we hope y'all join us for that. And we got, got a lot of good things coming up. I know summer is upon us, and a lot of y'all are gonna be um, taking off, taking vacations, doing different things, but what I would encourage you to do is to uh, check your church emails. If you're not signed up for those, please do. And um, if you're not signed up for constant contact, that's a good way too to also, uh, and you just have to call Kim at the church office to get signed up for that. To get signed up so you can, even if you are traveling and stuff, you can kind of keep up with what's going on because we do have some activities and things planned throughout the summer and we would love to get everybody involved. Thank you very much. As long as, long as we are, as, as, long, as, as long as we are a videotaping and putting these out on Facebook. Of course, what, even when you're traveling around the world, you can always tune in. And I, I think the microphone doesn't. It, oh, there it goes. Okay, <laughs> good. Uh, so yeah, it, wouldn't it be fun from your mountaintop retreat in Colorado or Seattle or wherever you're going, Los Angeles, to, to tune in and see St. See Mark's on Facebook and then let us know later, you know, how much fun it is to be able to worship with us regardless of geography. Today we're using Eucharistic Prayer A, it's on, on page 361, but as we prepare for the uh, altar and prepare also for the communion kit that we're sending out with our uh, lay Eucharistic minister for the nursing home, uh, we're going to prepare the altar and, and we're going to have a, an offertory sung by the choir. And uh, are we passing the plates yet, or is the money supposed to have yes. just been dropped in already? We have to sort of get back into the good habits of passing these plates. So uh, 
Don't be shocked when it comes by. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. 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 Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The gifts of God for you the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. This communion which we share here is in this communion kit traveling out to those who cannot be with us through age and infirmity. It's important that we offer our prayers for those who will be worshiping with us by extension and give thanks to them that they too may receive the sacramental grace. Please turn in your book to page 365. And we say that on behalf of ourselves and on behalf of those at the other end of the Facebook camera and at the other end of the nursing home communion rail. Let us all pray. <laughs> Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each of you this day and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.